miss you, long life, hip, 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 hooray, hallelujah, 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 amen. Ele é minha se a debate, vem a me casar agora. First of all, I'd like to thank God for my life. Finally, 50. Mm. For some people, it's like, oh, small boy, but now you reach here. For others, it's like, hey, Charlie, when will we reach there? So it's the evolution of life. I thank God for my life. And I thank God for my mother. It was a decision more than 50 years ago that brought me here 50 years ago today. <laughs> As how that decision came about, I have no idea. And I don't want to ask, but I want to say thank you for that decision. And darling wife, Irajwa, thank you very much as well. It was a decision to turn this whole thing into a party. All I wanted was to come and do my donation and go away. And she was like, go back around. And if you're married, you know, you wear the trousers outside, somebody else wears it inside. If you want peace of mind, let them win. So to Raj, thank you. <laughs> to my sister, Jifa, who managed to get some of my very old photographs. Picture you go home say God they'll put them together. I got a very nice jingle done for me if I love you too. Thank you. I know if I were to go line by line, name by name, we probably would hear we're here for the rest of the day. But I want to thank all of you for making time to come out. My brothers from Roman Ridge, my brothers from Pokey, my brothers from Coffee Shop. My brothers from a mixture of the first place, Irish, Fabri, and everywhere else in between. My childhood friends, friends of my friends. Former IGPs, Patrick Quartier, Champong, David Asantia Pitu, who has been like a brother from when I was born. Stanley, Commissioner of Police, Kofi Boache. All of you here, thank you. So, question, why is he a Oh, before that, of course, I need to acknowledge my caucus. My caucus comprising Globus, Ato, and Edio, which so they know themselves. Why is he a Sometime last year, a very good friend of mine, Ted 50. And um, there's somebody I've known more than 30, 35. Jack, Jack, what boy? <laughs> So, Mr. Joseph Asamoah, not George Asamoah. George is his older brother. But Joseph Asamoah approached me before his 50th birthday last year and said, look, I'm trying to put this thing together for SOS Children's Village. I need your support. I said, why not? He sent me pictures. I looked at the pictures. And I was like, wow. This is a worthy cause. So the man who actually drew my interest into the SOS Children's Village in the Sepa, my childhood friend, Joseph Asamoah Shaki, there he is. Thank you so very much for doing this for me. Thank you. It was you. And so, fast forward, my fifth death is approaching. I said, let me go and copy his star. I called him. He got me in touch. Where's that little woman? Where's Debbie? Debbie. Debbie. Where's Debbie? Aha. Uh -huh. He got me in touch with this lady. The first day I saw her, I was, um, for want of a better word, very disappointed. <laughs> She's very efficient. She sounds very good on the phone. And you know how when you speak to somebody on the phone for a while, you form an opinion of what they look like. Then I saw this small woman. So I said, ah, are you the Debbie? He says, yeah, the phone, the emails you. Who in any when they move here? But Debbie was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful liaison. And so the conversations continued. Came to my office, I came out here to have a look. 
And then I'm one of the most exciting people. You know, when you're a fan team man, you're always a fan team man. They said, oh, he's a big man at the SOS Students Village. And go <laughs> Full of wit, full of humor, great guy. I found a big brother in him also here as well. So Anko, it has to be. To all the mothers, the fathers, the teachers, the caregivers, the social workers over here, I thank you all. And so now I told you why the splits. Give back is primarily what I wanted to do. I have so many options on how to spend my 50th birthday. Corona decided to split jacket it nicely for me and for all of us. And so we decided that let's do this. Everybody does when you're going to such places, the usual toiletries, sundries, provisions, and all of it. What could I do or what would I or what should I or can I do differently? I said, okay, let me adopt one of the houses if it's possible. And uh, Debbie was very excited. She said, yes, it's possible. It will cost you 20,000 cities a year. These are the rules and regulations and structures that we follow. I said, well, I'm not exactly a rich man. But to the glory of God, I can afford 20,000 cities a year for charity. So, I will take one of the houses. So this house is house number eight. We came and did an inspection. We looked at what they needed. We touched it up. Put a few things in place. And of course, he asked for a few items, loads of them here. I'm not sure that I want to list everything here, but you can see what we have added to make sure that the house becomes even more, much more comfortable for them to live in. But as I said, 50 years ago or before that, it was my mother's decision that I arrived here. I'm sure like a parent, and some of us here are parents, we all have plans for our children what we want them to be, how we want them to turn out, and all of that. Not all of the time do you get it right. So I'm sure my mother had plans for me. My late father, who I have a feeling is somewhere around here, probably hiding in the trees and looking at his stupid head. I'm sure he would have been very happy to be here. Unfortunately, 31 years ago, he took a date. And of course, I'd have loved for my late brother to be here as well. But it is the ways of the world. So my mother is here, my sister is here. And because it was her decision, I spoke to the village and said, I'd like to honor my mother. And I named this place after her. They agreed. What can you do? You can 
asking, what can you do for me on my birthday? All I said was, pray for me. Just keep praying for me. So my dear mom, this is you. Ago, she became a mother for the first time. And you see, she's very lucky. I chose her. <laughs> because I was going to come anyway. <laughs> but truth be told, 50 years ago, as I said earlier, I was in Chinese, Dutch, American, South African, Zambian, Portuguese, not Portuguese, we have Portuguese blood. 
but I came out to Ghana. And even as a Ghanaian, I didn't come out from Ghana, wherever. Yeah. I came from this room. Yeah. And so 50 years down the line, if I have a birthday cake to cut, it is her birthday cake. So, don't worry, this time I'm crying. So 50 years down the line, I want to say thank you to my mother. My prayer tower. It's been 31 years ago since my father passed. It's been a long 31 years. For those of you who know my family, you know it's not been easy. <laughs> Chairman General was not part of the plan. I remember when I was going, well, I almost entered the military academy in November 91. <laughs> you know, just forgive me, let me just say this particular story. You know, I was crazy about the military. I was born in a military establishment. So you know when you're growing up, this is what you're used to. So I finished my national service. I'd come back from Tamale, 21 year old, hard guy. All I wanted to do was go to Teshi. And luckily for me, because of my father, I'm sure it would have given me a few considerations. A lot. And that is when I realized that mother's a this woman. Wow. She didn't like the idea. But you know what she did? So she knew, and you know when you're 21, you think that you own the world. But my mother actually looked at her and said, Look at this idiot. He thinks he owns the world. So whilst I was pushing, to go to military academy. My mother started something very interesting. Because I had a flair for writing, I like to talk, I'm a talkative, you know, stop me, I keep talking. And media stuff and things. Then I started a radio and television program at GBC at the time. And then I was doing TV theater. You see, Charlie? You see, my Joe? Then my mother would say, oh, I didn't know you were TV, you were radio show. I said, no, she, you're a yard. You think I'm not waiting for a whole moment. I said, ah, I won't go so that you say what. I said, Papa, I'm going to go to the house. Two years ago, I said, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Then when my mother realized it wasn't working, then she did the biggest emotional black. My mother is a very, very strong Christian. Today, she repeated what she used to bully me that time. Okay. Why do you see? The only commandment with a promise. Yeah. Honor thy father and thy mother. That there are days on earth will be long. Hey. So, Jan, now I will walk you around all thy father. She said, You go so Jan, I haven't honored my mother and my father. But my father is so Jan, so I have to honor. So, when they go, when they go, when they go, uh, then she started something very interesting. Every morning, my mother and I will do a morning devotion for almost for like a year and a half. <laughs> we are <waiting. laughs> And my mother made sure that at the end of the morning devotion, after the prayers and everything, then she remind me, when you say Bible, commandment by coming that comes to the premise. Who say honor thy father and thy mother? It's in your honor. Anyway, the number can end as you so. So you are not going. But looking back, she was right. Only mothers know only mothers can tell. Today, I think I would have become at this time. If I look at the rankings, and I was lucky. Today I'm in the Kenali I'll tell you why. It's also very important. Several years ago, I met a young man. He was then an army major. He's a spitting image of my father. He's a spitting image of my father. You should see him wear a military uniform. If I put my father's photograph next to his, you would think he's my father's son. But uh, my mother has assured me that my father was a... <laughs> wasn't that stubborn. But interestingly, he and I became friends when he was a major. 
And he looked so much like my dad. Interestingly, if I had gone to the military academy in November 1991, he would have been my integrator. Yeah. And the first day he met my mom, I said, Ma, look at this guy. Who does he look like? She looked at him, and those of you who know my mom, said, hey, that's our papa. The spitting image of my father. Before that, I had introduced him to my sister. And I said, if I look at this guy, who does he look like? My sister says, oh, Papa, it's what we call our father. And I don't know what it means that I wanted to go to the academy the same time he went. And apparently he's brilliant. Or a chef. Or I've been saying, so I'm going to be the first I would have been take me. I'm sure you hear me mention his name a lot for those of you who listen to my show. So he's my deputy father, good friend, brother. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Colonel GKT Sam. Where are you, my brother? Line by line. Uh, if I join you, Line by line. This is close to what my father looked like. Very close to what my father looked like. And so, you see? Ah. Uh, uh. Now, George, I hear my mother saying, this smell really be there. I told you, Charlie, you are for, are for investigation. So, now my cousin, Doreen, I'm sure it's Thierry. Doreen, I'm sorry. She was my father's favorite, one of his favorite nieces. And, Doreen, look at him. Is that not your uncle standing there? I know, I know. It's too much for you, right? Now, if you see him wear a uniform, his uncle Albert standing there. Trust me. Complete. Charlie, you are a disorder. A disorder. If you don't, my father will reincarnate. I will check your father too. Or if I will ask your mother, say, how far? Oh. <laughs> my mom says, well, I don't know. Anyway, I'm saying all this. It may sound winding and a bit disconnected. But I'm saying all this because for some strange reason, we end up being connected somehow. Sometimes you meet somebody you're not too sure where did they start from. Next thing you know, there's a connection. And a lot of you have connections with. I see my friends from Garrison Primary, people that have known since 1976 when I first went to class. Wow. Salas, Dade, where's Jude? Jude. You did there, okay. So I sat in class one with these people in 1976. Thank God we've known each other for what, 44 years now. We're still friends. My friend from Garrison Primary. Where's Globus? Friday, 8th October 1982. Globus. My cousin Spring, who I knew was my cousin, had never met until we went to Form 1. What do you mean? So from, for those of you from Oka Banks, all of you, thank you very much. You're 50 once. Allow me to talk. It's a free one. Well. <laughs> my, my wife, you want me, said, I got cash at the door. I talk tax, but it's free tax. <laughs> to all of you again, I say thank you. But it's my mother's birthday. Not mine. This is her day of liberation. So 50 years ago, you escaped from prison. Oh, yes. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank God for the gift of life. 50 years for the gift of life of me and my son. <laughs> Wondering when this went. <laughs> because a few shots came up and landed on myself. <laughs> so, Ma, thank you. Thank you, everybody.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. God bless us all. Thank you.